embarrassing. I'm trying to trying to run a proper show here, and apparently somebody was saying there was there was something in the background of my loss. I mean, no, there's there's nothing there. Definitely nothing there. Anyway, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Nothing at all. Anyway, I think it's possibly time for something um, perhaps a little more serious, weighty, and uh, no, no, let's forget that. Let's do let's do this next piece, um, which is. Uh, I've called it beeping. I'm not sure that's its uh, its correct title, but um, you'll see why I've called it beeping in a second. Uh, this is uh, a return uh, visit from the lovely Nimue Brown. With bat wings beating. Oh, the terrible thing in the night. Do I dare to describe my plight? as my guts are marauded by fright in response to this terrible sight. This horror, this nameless dread, some unspeakable nightmare bread will torment me till I am dead with its ghastly sounds in my head. That smooth, dark, oily skin, the unpleasant horns that curve in, my sanity wearing too thin, to look upon this must be sin. It has no face to be seen, cannot speak, it is truly obscene. I fear that my features turn green and I dread to think where it's been. All they do is they clutch and they fly, although I cannot tell why. Will they clutch and clutch till you cry? Will the horror go on till you die? The meeping, the terrible sound, can a worse noise ever be found? By deadliest fear I am bound when they snatch me away from the ground. Oh, they clutch and they fly and they clutch. It might not sound very much. Prehensile paws, dire touch. I am now at the mercy of such. Will there be no end to the meeping? It drowns out the sound of my weeping. I fear my ears are seeping. This gaunt thing has me in its keeping. Now the direst fate I endure. My spirit is wounded full sore. A threat surpassing all gore. I am broken and can bear no more. It tickles me mercilessly. It tickles and won't let me be. It meeps as it tickles my knee. I know I can never be free. It meeps and it tickles, it tickles and meeps. The horror, the dread, the insanity. It meeps and it tickles and tickles and meeps. There is no hope at all left for me. <laughs> oh, genius, genius. Um, Wonderful piece there from uh, Nimue, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Um... Hello, what? Hello? Don't know where that came from. Anyway, um, we've got a few more things. Oh dear, I oh know. I, I better move on quickly before uh, before these things uh, get any worse. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so basically, uh, next uh, we have um, a piece um, from Andy Arbon, um, which was. Uh, Oh, actually, this is a piece again that was written by uh, Nimue, but uh, it's actually um, Andy Arbon who's telling us all about the cursive letter of, uh, of Aki Chevin. Hello, it is a cold and dreary day. A perfect time to uh, tell a story and examine a rather unusual artefact. Due to the history of this artefact I felt it would be best if it was kept under lock and key. I haven't carried out any sort of in detailed investigation of this before, though I am aware of, it, of the tale from its previous owner. open. I'm sure we'll be needing it. 
the box is micro mosaic of rather fine quality, though that I guess is to be expected given the ship that it was found upon. There do not appear to be any signs of binding or anything of that nature on the exterior of the box. And other than its high quality, there is nothing really remarkable about it. Okay, there is a further micro mosaic panel on the lid again. No signs of binding on the box itself though. The type of wood is unusual. It may maybe it is infused with some kind of oil. Difficult to say really. There is a document. Now oh, that's interesting. The seal that has been used for this contains one of the signs of the Elder Gods. I'd love to know who sealed this and I'll have to open it to find out what it contains, of course. Aside from the letter, there is the object, shall we say, which I hesitate to touch. And then two ampules containing a viscous red liquid, which I hope is not what it looks like. They are slightly different in colour. There is some signs of leakage, though that may just be oil from the seat, from the wax seals. The box is lined in black velvet and appears to have been made specifically to contain these items. The object, of course, is a letter opener, but I was informed by my dealer that it would be most unwise to use it, so I have brought my own to break the seal on this document. The paper is fairly thick and of reasonable quality. Oh, that's surprising. The document itself is actually typewritten. I was expecting a sort of scrawl of illegible cursive. I wonder who wrote this. As far as I know, there are no typewriters on the island of Hopeless. There must be, though. I mean, this is just a quick skim. This must have been written on the island. There's a lot of mysteries here because normally Things, once they are on the island, do not leave, but this appears to be an exception. This is clearly the tale in question that... I wonder how the previous owner read it, as it was still sealed. This is the tale of the cursed letter opener of Otley Shevin. Otley Shevin inherited the letter opener on the day when he found it inside his great aunt. Given the state of her remains, it was hard to tell whether some person unknown had stabbed her with it, or whether she had simply had a funny turn while holding it and fallen onto it. That it was between her shoulder blades would have encouraged some people to infer murder. However, Otley knew his aunt Maud well enough not to jump to that conclusion. The winter before there had been an accident where Maud had been found pinned to the inside of her front door by the very same letter opener. At the time she had explained to Otley that she had been trying to deal with a massive spider on the ceiling and had fallen from the chair that had been serving as a ladder. The letter opener had slipped somehow, going right through the skin on her shoulder and trapping her against the door. It was the letter opener with which Maud's father, Asparagus Shevin, had cut his own throat, which, given that the letter opener was barely equal to cutting paper, must have been a long and rather unpleasant process. If there was a story about where the letter opener had come from, Otley had never heard it. He supposed it had to be from the family's pre-island days, when they lived somewhere that people sent letters to each other rather than just going round and yelling outside each other's houses like normal people. Great Aunt Maud certainly couldn't read, 
and he didn't think that her father could read either. Now Otley, equally unskilled in letters in every sense of that term, was the possessor of a letter opener that he had no obvious use for, a letter opener that at this point had been involved in two hideous deaths. Three, if you counted the time that Herb Shevin had used it to kill Hebe Shevin after he, was di- after he died and was buried and then came back again. That one was contentious. Does it really count as killing someone if they've definitely already been dead ones? Otley buried his aunt in her back garden, partly because it's what she would have wanted, partly because moving her sticky remains around in pieces on a shovel was pretty undignified, and putting her in a wheelbarrow to get her to church didn't seem like the right thing either. He took the letter out in her home, gave it pride of place on the mantelpiece, having moved half a skull and a couple of odd-looking stones out of the way. He liked the way the pretty handle caught the light. He was so busy admiring it that he nearly tripped over the hearthrug and barely saved himself from falling face first into the fire. That ends the letter. There's no text on the back. I wonder who wrote that. Why? I mean, the handle is rather pretty, I have to say. And it certainly does catch the light, especially in here. Even these dim bulbs in here, in this room. Some, somewhat mesmerising, to be honest. This is odd, the point seems to be drawn towards me. Yes, this, 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 yeah, let, let's put this down now. Put it down and seal the box. That gave me a rather funny turn. I wonder what stone that is. I mean, it looks like amethyst, but as far as I know, amethyst does not have that effect. Oh no, the letter's not back in the box. I'm going to have to open it again. Which way was the point facing? Towards me or away from me? If I spin the box round, then the point cannot be facing towards me. I, I, I feel myself drawn to the pistol, but I very much doubt that would do any heart, any good here. Let's, um, yes, how best to do this. Let's close the letter. Open the box as little as possible and slip it in. I think we're done. Um, let's get this returned to storage and... Let's never speak of it again. There's something wrong about that letter opener. Very, very wrong. There we go. Um, cautionary tale there, I think. If you find a strange box, it's probably best not to open it. That's my advice. Um, so, um, we've got some more stuff coming up soon, and uh, oh, not again. Um, and uh, we've got some great stuff coming up still, we've got some more songs, we've got um, some more stories, some great stories, we've got another interview, um, and uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff, so stay tuned. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, hello, I've just been noted, oh, uh, excuse me, just, just stay tuned for a moment. We interrupt our scheduled programming for this emergency broadcast. Good afternoon, I think. Morning. We, sure. We at the Hopeless Maine Scientific Society would All of us. like to formally apologise for the thing that happened last week. I don't apologise. Shut up. While it is not within our nature to point fingers, it is worth noting that melodramatic... Yeah, yeah, we don't find theirs either. That melodramatic Chevin is largely to blame for the thing that happened last week. However, as he is one of our number, and that, responsibility does fall upon our shoulders as a whole. Llamas. We have been doing our best to take care of those affected by the thing that happened last week. He hasn't really. 
Fortunately, we do not believe that any have been fatally wounded by it, although many have received permanent scarring, especially those we were unable to rescue from the ministrations of Doc Willoughby. Some don't have arms anymore. Yeah, it, it's pretty gruesome. I figured it's attractive. <laughs> to each their own. We are happy to report that Petunia Jones, who was most affected by the thing that happened last week, is well on his way to a full recovery, and seems to be in quite good spirits, aside from intermittent mutterings of the teeth, 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 which does seem to be a rather common symptom. An improvement, an improvement. A rather common symptom amongst those directly impact- impacted by the thing that happened last week. The thing. Regrettably, melodramatic Chevin himself has not been found, although it must be said that it is difficult to distinguish him from other Chevins without his overblown personality, which we last saw being eaten by a goblin. He was eaten by a guinea pig. I thought it was a goblin. Maybe I was just... Maybe I was... I, I was slightly intoxicated at the time. Uh, the parentage is not certain. Mm. Which makes locating him so that he can be held accountable prove rather difficult. He's in a shoe. You never told me that! <laughs> well, <sighs> I have. We are, as always, grateful for the support of this loving community we have here on Hopeless and look forward to any new recruits who feel moved towards science and as a result of forwards the thing. And backwards. As a result of the thing that happened last week. We will be studying the intoxicating properties of night potatoes this week, and are hoping some brave souls will volunteer as test subjects. And, and chillabites. Remember, science waits for no man. Slash woman, slash squid, slash unknowable horror, slash Fred. Hologram. All that, I suppose. Science doesn't wait. Anyway, it doesn't wait. Hologram. Wait. (laughs) Um, So that was the Hopeless Main Scientific Society in in typical precise and uh, uh, mood there. Um, uh, That was performed by James Weasel Grease. and Sorry, James Weasel Grease, get my teeth in. Um, and written by him, and I hesitate to say aided um, by Robin Treefellow. I, f- I feel really probably more interrupted is probably the phrase we're looking for here. <laughs>